Uh, good afternoon. If you don't know me, I'm Christian Stanley, the Hadley Select Board Chair. Uh, thank you. I want to first thank you all for coming to the Hadley Singer Center groundbreaking ceremony. Um, programs have been handed out, but just a programming note. We're going to start with some opening remarks. I have a few words to say. Then I will pass it over to Senator Comerford. Then we'll hear from Suzanne Travisano. And finally, we'll hear from Jane Nevinsmith, the building committee chair. I also want to say that Representative Kerry uh, did express his regret for not being here today, but Kelly is here with her baby in his, his absence, so thank you for coming. Uh, following our remarks, we will take some groundbreaking photographs over here and enjoy, enjoy some refreshments provided by the senior community right back there. Um, so just to kick it off, this groundbreaking not only commemorates the beginning of a new chapter for the Hadley Senior Center, but also the town. The last new municipal buildings in town include the Hadley Elementary School and Public Safety Complex, which were built in 1996. Now, after almost a quarter century, we are starting on three new building projects this year, starting with the Senior Center here. In the next few months, we'll be demolishing the Hooker School over there, replacing that with a new library. And on the north side of town, we'll be constructing a new fire substation. For the Council on Aging, getting to this point was no easy task, and years of work have led up to this moment. This project is an amazing example of what grassroots citizen action can accomplish. There was no edict from above to construct a new senior center. This process began with citizens, many of them here today, petitioning town meeting to get the ball rolling. It took more than one town meeting to get citizens of this town to buy into the project. <laughs> However, once they did, the team here began a rigorous design and approval process. Like any journey, it had its twists and turns, but with grit and faith, we stand here today celebrating what's been done and we see a promising future ahead. Um, I can, cannot acknowledge and thank enough those who participated in this effort. The process to get here was led by a committee, and I would like to thank all of those that participated. Ed Golding, Doug Ray, Dan Regish, David Story, Karen Walter Zizko, uh, Peg Wilson, Jerry Devine, and Rory Woods. Gary Berg, if you're here, I don't know if I saw you. You know, thank you for all your help throughout the process. Without you, I don't know if we would have moved out of the Hooker School. Uh, Suzanne Travisano, thank you for sticking with this project. Your hard work and dedication as a Senior Services Director truly demonstrates a remarkable commitment to our community. Finally, if I were able to give today a Volunteer of the Year Award, I would want to give it to Jane Nevin-Smith. I just have to thank you so much. It is amazing what you have done for us. You are at the Council on Aging all the time. You are at a good majority of select board meetings. You are handing out birthday cake at the co-op, which is unrelated to this, but just shows your commitment and how the list could go on and on. I'm always surprised where I see you contributing a hand to a cause. Truly, without you as a citizen activist, I don't know if we would be here today. So thank you here, here. so much. I also want to thank David Nixon, our town administrator, uh, for his efforts on this project and the work he does for the town. And then all of the contractors that have worked with us on this project. Phil Palumbo at Collier's has been so great to work with, has done a lot for us. Uh, the EDM architects, Tim Eagles, Don Eagles, and Chris Wanty. Um, and now in this phase of the construction, Forest Construction is our general contractor on the project. Thank you for being here and for hosting us today. Um, with that, that's the end of my, my what I have to say. I'm going to hand it over to Joe Comerford. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. And I just want to say that, Christian, your remarks are so uplifting. Um, and I echo the thanks that you gave to those gathered today. And, and it's really, a, this project really is an example of how many people in citizen action it takes to move something like this forward. And standing there and listening to you, Christian, I was also mindful uh, that John Seibeck is smiling, I'm sure, 
today, and I know that I joined Dan Carey um, in thanking Rep Cybeck for his legacy here at work still, even though it was a small percentage of funds for this senior center, I know that John will be really gratified when we show him pictures from today and be so grateful for the painstaking work that I know um, and he knows that you have done to make this possible. It would not happen without the town of Hadley. And the fact that you have not one, but two, but three um, building projects going really speaks to the grit and fortitude and strength of this community. You are rare uh, in our Hampshire Franklin Worcester district. And I just wanna say how honored I am to represent you in the state Senate uh, and join with Dan Carey um, as your champions on Beacon Hill. And the last thing I'll just say is that I grew up, my parents grew up saying again and again to me that actually a society should be judged by how we treat our elders. That was something that was uh, said again and again in my family um, with you know relatives gathered. That was something that my parents have held dear and helped me hold dear. And I, I just want to say to you that I am honored to see uh, Hadley treat senior citizens and elders in our community with such centrality, such respect. Uh, it speaks to the goodness of this community. So heartfelt congratulations uh, to you all today and thank you so much for letting me speak and uh, share greetings from Rep. Carey and myself. for saying everything I was going to say. <laughs> um, but I wanted to thank everybody seriously for joining us to mark this milestone, um, a new chapter in the town's history, by recognizing, as our senator um, said, the value of seniors in this community, a full 34% of the total population of this town. Well done. And I found out that you're quite a feisty bunch. Uh, I found this out uh, a year after I got here at a public vision planning session for seniors. Um, and this was in 2014 of July. Um, I wanted to know um, what kind of things you wanted in your senior center. I believe I'm your advocate and I know that every Every town, every city, every senior center has its own work to help you age and live in your community. So I wanted to hear what your needs and interests were, and I got some of that at this vision uh, forum. Um, I got a few program ideas, but once they started speaking up, then it really spilled out. Um, that what they really wanted, and I'm quoting from the scribe who wrote this all down as people were throwing things out from the audience. They wanted um, a more modern environment in an independent building with adequate heating and cooling. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Well, needless to say, that was a little bit bigger program than I thought I was going to get that day, but I filed it in the back of my mind. Um, and then come October 2015, I was asked to put together a preliminary space needs assessment um, based on having been there for a little while and what you all had shown me was important to you. Um, I went to my COA board back then, Glenn Clark was our chair. And we all discussed the possibilities and the opportunities. And the COA board made the decision to put uh, an article by petition on the 2016 fall town meeting warrant. We needed 100 signatures to get on that warrant. And within two and a half weeks, we had 600 signatures. Um, we would go to town meeting twice more. And uh, you feisty seniors showed up each time, some wearing t-shirts that said, vote yes, new senior center, um, slogging through the rain, the slush, the snow, 
some with walkers, canes or wheelchairs, and in numbers that made it abundantly clear, we want this. And it is because of you that we stand here today with hard hats, shovels, and the foundation of your new senior center behind me. So give yourselves a hand. Amongst all the people that have previously been mentioned, there are some that are personally in, um, dear to me through this whole thing, um, besides the boards and the committees that I'd like to acknowledge today. People that stood out in my memory of the process and the long winding road to get here today. The COA staff past and present for weathering through the ups and downs in the office while this was going on for four years. Um, first, and from the beginning, Elsie and John Wiskevitz, big advocates that really wanted to see this happen. My staff, Violet Suska, my program coordinator, Lauren Hannigan, my outreach coordinator, Carla Grabiak, Diane Tolpa, Peg Bannett, Sharon Howard, and Connie Michkowski were all in that office keeping it running while we were banging up our heads against walls trying to figure out what the next step is going to be and what the next twist or turn was about to come up behind us. So thank, thank all of them for um, weathering that with me. Um, I'd also like to mention some past board members that truly wanted to cross the threshold of the new building, but I'm sure will still be there with us in spirit. George Ritter and Elsie Andrews. Our past, our past and present state reps, John Seibach and, and Dan, Daniel Carey. Senator Joe Comerford for being with us today, and Abby Weber, the Regional Director for Elizabeth Warren, is with us today. Um, and then personally, three other people that, for me, um, personified the spirit and persistence of making this happen was um, Frank Zalot, who um, I had a very long conversation with at the very beginning and he knew I was really worried and after an hour's conversation about two weeks later I got a letter from him saying that he could see how concerned I was for the seniors and the value that I thought they deserved um, and he mentioned that this might be a place for a great new senior center because the town already owned it, which was also echoed, echoed by our board at the time. Um, another is Leanne Carlin. Um, she lived at Winfield. She was very quiet, but she mobilized Winfield by organizing them all getting the same shirts that many of you wore to town meetings saying vote yes senior center and has recently passed away. A quiet spirit that picked up the ball to show the momentum to others. And um, Meryl Tomatskiewicz, otherwise known to us as Mert, um, who's just always been uh, the the carrier of the news, the rallier of the troops for the seniors over in Winfield, and is a big part of the heart of everything that we do. Mert, can you just acknowledge? <laughs> and last but never least, uh, my partner in crime, Jane Nevin Smith. <laughs> 
Let me just say, we've, we've shared a few glasses of wine over this. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's been a, a, we balanced each other like yin and yang, like gin and tonic. Um, and I can't picture me um, having navigated through this without her being the counterbalance to me. Um, we've become dear friends, and I'm so grateful to you for everything that you've done to help make this happen today. So this is a celebration of a project for seniors by seniors. I want to thank everybody for the, their support and enthusiasm for this project begun in the spring of 2016. The seniors were out getting petitions signed to get the question put on the town warrant. The seniors turned out for the first vote in the dark and on a snowstorm because they believed so strongly in the project. They carried signs asking the town to support the request for additional monies on the corners of Routes 9 and 47. But this project could not have come to this point without the majority of the town supporting it. When the building committee was formed, we decided to visit recently built senior centers and spoke with their directors in Hamden, Northampton, Irving, Holyoke, Chicopee, Westfield, and Sterling. We asked the directors what they liked and what they would have done differently and made careful notes about their responses. We talked about the pros and cons of their ideas and slowly the vision for our building was born. When we first met with our architects, we told them of our findings and they were wonderful at incorporating our wishes into a building. The architects have been immensely helpful in creating features that will enable people with a variety of disabilities, including visual, auditory, and ambulatory, to feel comfortable at home in this space. They truly listened to what we were saying. It has been a pleasure working with the owner's project manager, who has supplied all of the knowledge about large construction projects that we didn't even know we needed. And so far, working with the builders have been a delight. But most of all, I want to thank Suzanne Travisano for hanging in there with us. All of us seniors have had you. I think I can speak for all the members of the building committee that we are very excited about this building and all that it offers. We believe that we are building the best building for the seniors of Hadley that is possible. And I am so pleased that so many of you can be here with us today. And without further ado, break out the shovels. <laughs>